Good afternoon, everyone. They're all right. <laughs> <laughs> the College of the Marshall Islands, my colleagues, and I would like to welcome you to the Spring 2014 Liberal Arts Capstone Presentations. I'd like to ask Gabriella Hitchfield to come forward and lead us in an opening prayer. These, this type of work, this type of class, this will be very important, especially as you're moving up into the upper division of almost any college or any university. This is really the basis or the core of most research that you will do when you're in school. Because in a lot of ways, it's almost like work. In a sense, it's like talking to You have a lot of information from a lot of different areas. And how does it all relate? And what does it mean? And then what type of uh, conclusions do you come, you know, come up with as you uh, conclude this research or this work that you've uh, put together? And uh, you know, most of the ones that I've seen over the last, I guess, four or five years, I've been pretty good. And the uh, you know, first time I uh, was exposed to this was when I was working at the Capitol and one of the students that we had working with us on some water surveys, well, I think she dropped out of school for a semester <laughs> to work on these surveys with us at the Capitol, but then she turned this into her capstone project, which was actually, then we used her work in the government to get more money for more water catchments and things like this. Um, but a lot of this work is very important. I mean, you want to talk about training, that's exactly what this is in terms of this preparation for upper division as you uh, get ready to go on to you know, other universities or other colleges. And uh, I'm interested to see what, uh, what you guys have put up for today, you know, the topics. And uh, hopefully, I mean, uh, as they have in the past years, it'll be very interesting. So thank you and thanks for asking. Um, first of all, I'd like to say it takes a village to create, create a semester worth of capstones. Not only our wonderful students, but our team of teachers. And I have to thank a few people, but everyone that took part. First of all, the media club was instrumental in finishing these projects. And I would like to thank them. And um, Wilbert Alec, whose uh, wonderful students work is on display in the back and who helped with the setup. And anybody else that I'm missing, will um, we'd like to thank. Capstone was an idea built on from what four-year institutions do for their last uh, semester in four-year institutions. And we thought, why not? here at CMI. What capstone means, a capstone is, would be like the top of a well or the top of a, of a uh, water catchment. And it just means it's the top of what your work is here at CMI for your liberal arts degree. These students that will be presenting their projects started out in our writing a research paper, English 220 class, where they chose a topic of interest to them. They researched it for a whole semester and wrote a very uh, well-supported paper on that. And the next semester, we kind of begged them, inspired them, I hope, to take on Capstone, which isn't a very easy uh, project. Capstone includes um, a proposal writing, making a proposal, uh, making a connection in the community through a mentor, and through an organization or a person that can lead them in their community service. They do 25 hours plus of community service. And through that process, they learn about the how their research can help grow that um, problem and make it um, into a solution. And I believe that after working with these um, very smart young ladies that 
they are the best we can produce. And they've impacted not only us and the students at the CMI, but they've impacted the communities that they work in. All of them chose topics that had to do with um, the Marshall Islands and with um, major issues we have in the Marshall Islands, many of them women's issues. And I'm very proud of the work they've done. Hi, my name is Ashania Mayer, and my topic today is domestic violence, which leads to a lifetime bruise. Domestic violence is an act or an act of violence or abuse against a person living in one's household, especially on members of one's immediate family. In my research, my research question was, how do Marshallese women face domestic violence in the Marshall Islands? And the first type of abuse that I learned is physical abuse. This type of abuse is when a person is hitting the victim by pinching, pun punching, or hitting it with something hard, which creates a lot of abuse. The second is social abuse, which you prevent the victim from going to places such as parties, meetings, appointments, and this Marshallese does describe it as gunman. The third, the third type of domestic violence is economic abuse, which oh, a lot of people say it's financial abuse because one's partner keeps money from the other, doesn't give money, the paychecks and credit cards, they, they keep it from the, um, from the partner. And this type of abuse is called economic abuse. The third type is sexual abuse, also considered as forcing unwanted sex. And this is considered rape. The fourth type of abuse is psychological abuse. In other words, we say verbal abuse as using words as do this or I'll kill you. And this affects the brain. And a lot of people can go turn and they can go sick just because you, you say something that's bad, something that affects the brain, and also it can affect their health. <clears throat> because my research is based on just women, I did my research in my English 220 class, and these are the statistics that I found that 92 to 95 percent are women that are the victims that are facing domestic violence. And physical violence is higher among the urban areas, which is 29%. And the rural areas is 27%. 7% of the victims are pregnancy that are facing domestic violence. Half of the women never seek for help. But if they do seek for help, they go to either family, friends, but they never go to um, such places as the counselors or women or youth. Um, my capstone pr proposal. I chose this topic. Why this topic is so important to me? Because there are a lot of people in the Marshall Islands, especially a lot of family members, friends, that are facing this type of issue. And Marshallese people don't know how to speak out. They, they don't know how to share stuff. And that is why it creates a lot of their, their mindset is being is being um, I'm sorry, but <laughs> domestic violence is something that we are learning to do. We're taught to do. And it is not our culture. We take this as our culture, but it is not. This this is based on women because a lot of women in the Marshall Islands are facing domestic violence today. And Keep in mind that real men don't use violence. My community service, this semester I worked with the Udmi. I enjoyed working there, doing data, filing, filing a lot of papers. I worked with my mentor and I also attended an awareness at Vital Gospel Church. And I saw a lot of issues, a lot of problems that people may basically just they question about Udemy. 
and it was a successful job. Um, the solution to my question is to educate one another about domestic violence and attend more awarenesses and outreaches in communities and take part. Listen to victims who speak and seek help. And please, don't hide. Speak because there are people who can support and help you. And places you can go to seek help is at Olami, u to u school counselors, and church pastors. Comparing these two classes last semester, I attended my English 220 class. This is what my research was all about, domestic violence against women. And it was a lot of work. I did a lot of research. I went to a lot of places, interviewed a lot of people, and it was really challenging. But then, a whole while, it was worth it. Because in my liberal arts capstone's class, I never got to write. I didn't do any research. I did additional research, but it was all based on my community service because I got to observe and I did my work. I actually got to go out there and do my work. As in the community service, I learned from people, not only from people, from my mentor, from my mentor and also my fellow instructors. And working in a liberal arts capstone class, it teaches you how to be independent. We attend seminars and our instructors teach us a lot. We also got to do the fun part, which was fundraising and having to get to know each other better and well. And for those who plan to come next semester, please take liberal arts capstone class because it's a lot of fun. This is, these are my instructors. Um, in conclusion, I would like to give a special Omo Baba to Janet Hess, Mary Van Aachen, and Elizabeth Zuitai. My mentor, Shirley, Shirley Dela Cruz, who's not here, she's off to an Order Island trip. And my cameraman, Eva Nani, my actors, Henry Long and David, Florence Joel, Nele Erola, Belenda, and Nidua Jerry. Thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, please ask. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jamie Goodell. I'm from Yabapisen. Um, my topic is truancy. It all started out last semester when I took English 220 and they told us to choose a topic that is an issue around the world and especially here on the Marshall Islands. So I came up with truancy. Truancy meant being absent without any excuses or good cause. The reason why I picked truancy is because it's affecting our youth nowadays all over the world here in the Marshall Island and the FSM. During my research last semester, I came up with a number of causes for truancy. The first one being family problem. And in, within family problem, there's expenses, interest in education, neglecting the child or child neglect, death in family, and divorce. This is what I came up with when I was doing my research paper on English with me. When I was told to take a strong proposal, I decided to change my topic a little to what triggers truancy here on Manuel. And here's, here's what I found out. It also came from my research during English with me. Um, there's a lot of underage drinking here in Marshall Island, Manuel. It's due to the cause of uh, child neglect. We let them wander around because we're busy working or in school or doing something else. They end up feeling neglected. They started to do things they think that will attract somebody's attention. The next thing being family problem. There's a lot of family problems. For example, divorce. 
Then in the family, uh, domestic violence, and so on. If these things happen in the family, there's a possibility that a kid in the family will go through it because they cannot concentrate on education while there's a problem at home. They would want to stay home because they feel like if they left home, something bad is going to happen. The next thing that triggers the uh, pregnancy here in major is teen pregnancy. I believe, according to my research, that teen pregnancy is caused by lack of information on sexual sex advices. What I was told during my research is that sex is a very discreet thing here in my job. It is not appropriate to talk about it in public. But then we're seeing the consequences. So I think that we should talk more about teen pregnancy and seek more help from our birth of family planning. The other thing that causes uh, truancy here in Major is mental and physical disability. There's a, there's a school that uh, host, that enroll mental and physical disability students, but they don't hold, uh, uh, enroll much students because they have space limit. And most of these children that got enrolled there, they, they're not treated well. There's so many of them, they, the teachers doesn't have time to pay attention to to give them the attention that they needed. So they end up feeling neglected again. They end up being bullied by the rest of the students who are, we say, normal. And they feel like they don't want to go to school. They want to stay home where it's comfortable and nobody's bullying them. During my community service, I work at Youth Youth with Aluka and Maria. Another thing that I learned during community service is that working, working for free sucks. <laughs> it really does, because it's, it's hard work yet you know that you won't get paid in two weeks. But then, I enjoyed it because at in the end of the day, I know that I help some students learn something, help them feel, feel good about themselves, and so on. The other thing is, I'm not from here, and when I start working at Youth to Youth, I feel like an outsider. Nobody wanted to talk to me, like the rest of everybody. <laughs> because when, I, when, I, when they talk to me in Marseilles, I speak in English, and they just ignore me and walk away. <laughs> but then, little by little, we get to know each other, they start talking to me. I don't care, I'm not American, I don't care how you speak English, I don't know how you speak English. <laughs> so yeah, it's strange, but it's, it's good, it was more, I like my community service, I did more than 25 hours of community service with Maria and I enjoyed every hour of it. Upon taking that song class, I experienced headaches. <laughs> um, so much uh, stress and a lot of depression. It's because I think the depression came from getting to get the information from what causes this, which I cannot help. I don't have it. I cannot do anything about truancy. It, I, it can. It got to be the whole community to put their hands together. It cannot be only me. But then there's value of my efforts. I get to know those people at Youth to Youth, which I don't, I won't know them if I wouldn't take this class because I wouldn't go there. I saw those kids from, uh, sometimes on the road, they wave at me, they call me Hikaki. <laughs> and I feel good just to help people without expecting something back. There are roadblocks, according to my uh, topic, truancy, there are roadblocks. The roadblocks are, the, there are no uh, status, uh, statistics from 
Education, Minister of Education, there are no statistics from year to year on how many students are truant or how many kids are truant. Possible solutions for this truancy? For me, it all starts again in the family. Be prepared. You have to be prepared. If you know you can raise a child, then have the child. Because if not, the child will go lost, will get lost in the world. <laughs> My product is a booklet. It's over there on the table. You can take a look at it after the presentation. In the booklet, the, the things that I've stated, it's in there. And then there's interventions. There's ways you can prevent truancy. What I wanted to do is provide everyone on the information of truancy because I've noticed that truancy is not a big topic around town. And if it's possible, it may prevent kids to go through it. How to, the, the booklet also have ideas on how to help the kids who are children or the people are in the community deal with the children kids. What I plan to leave behind, it's the booklet again. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Being able to communicate with the people in the community, it, it's a really big thing for me because I don't go out much in the community, I just stay in the dorm and internet. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is learning about truancy. Because it's not only happening here in my Jura, it's a worldwide uh, crisis. And every year, the the amount of people go, uh, kids going to rent are getting higher. And to rent, people who go to rent ended up being criminals in future days. <coughs> what I learned from the whole process that if I put my mind on something, it will eventually work. The reason why is I complain a lot. <laughs> I got play a lot in Mary and Jenny. <laughs> and the other thing is, capstone is tough, but I'm telling you, you have to take it. It'll open your eyes to new things that you've never seen before. For now, I want to give special, special thanks to Janet Hess, Mary Van Alken, and Elizabeth Suitas, and my mentor, Aluka and Maria, who are, they're not here today with us. Thank you. And thank you for coming. Hi. Um, my topic is suicide. Um, we all experience that in our life from time to time, but suicide is really hard for us to deal with when it happens to us. So this topic has been my topic since English to 20. Um, my research question on English to 20 was what is the effect of suicide on people in the community? I did some research online and in the community. Uh, I also did a survey. What I did find out was that suicide causes, it causes depression. People get so depressed that they cannot go on with their life, it's hard for them to move on. Um, they grieve a lot and they start drinking because they believe that if they drink then their problem will disappear. But when they are sober and they realize that their problems still exist, they start drinking again. It also causes anger. For some people, they feel angry for the person who committed suicide because they believe that the person chose death instead of life. They chose to die instead of living life with them. There is a lot of guilt on survivors of suicide. 
people feel guilty because they believe that there's something that they could have done or they could have done or if they paid enough attention then they could have prevented the suicide. Also, there's thing, especially on family who are Christians. Because as we all know, it's not it's a sin for a Christian to commit suicide. So if the family considers themselves as Christians and then one of them commits suicide, they can feel a sin because they believe that people are talking about them. They also create problems in the family. Um, family members start blaming each other for what happened. They believe that it's one of the one of one of them is their fault. Um, so this uh, when I took a uh, capstone this class, I changed my topic a little bit to what is being done here in the martial island to prevent suicide, help prevent suicide. Um, there is mental health. Uh, there is my mentor, Adri, who helped a lot to make me understand more about suicide and what they're doing to prevent suicide in the community. They did a lot of, they do a lot of retreats in the community and in the schools. And also, they help the suicide patients in the hospital. So, once a suicide patient is admitted to the hospital, one of the counselors in the mental health are called in. And once the patients can talk, or, yeah, they're better, the counselors will talk to them before they used to make appointments with them. Like, they set up time for the patient to come to mental health and talk to them. But it didn't work out because most of the patients, once they leave, they don't come back. Because they believe that people will think of them as crazy when they see them go into mental health. So what they did was, once they go to the hospital to visit the patient, they ask them, where do you live? What time can I come to your house? And if you're not at your house, where are you going to be? They're trying to make sure that they can meet the patient and be able to help them. And this work a lot because they go from house to house looking for the person, the patient. And if the patient is free during, uh, during after working hours, they took some of their personal time to go visit the patient. And give the youth is also doing a lot of outreach and play, uh, they talk a lot to their people about suicide. Uh, in my proposal, I stated that uh, this topic is important to me because I believe that the, the person who committed suicide is gone and it's time for us to try and start to move on with our life. And also, it is not really a big problem in Yap where I'm from, but it's a big problem here. So I did my community service at Mental Health. During my community service, I experienced a lot. I get to meet the mental disabilities. They're always hanging out there in the mental health. I also trained my, with the support of my mentor, Audrey. We get to go around and visit patients in the community, and it's a good experience for me. One thing that I did other than uh, working at a uh, community service at the mental health was house painting. Uh, thanks to Cassandra, we get to paint one house, uh, the house of one of the patients. Um, this topic and this class has helped me understand more about suicide than before. And it also changes my view of people, especially mental disability. Because before, when I see them on the road, I never think about them. They're just like people. But when you get to go visit their homes 
and where they live. You get to see how much help they need and uh, how much help they need from their family, their friends, and everybody in the community. And like I said, uh, I get to know all the counselors talk to their patients. I want it to be something that can help people in the future and something that people can learn from. The book is called Survivors of Suicide. Because I decided that since my topic on 220 was the effect of people of suicide on people in the community, I decided to, to do this book to help the survivors of suicide. And it's called Survivors of Suicide, a guide for those left behind. It'll be helping people deal with their grief and help it'll be helping them recover. Um, in conclusion, suicide is never the answer. Seek help, look for help. There is always help. There is counselors, youth to youth, counselors of mental health. Talk to a friend or talk to anyone. And if you see someone that you know that they need help or you feel like they need help, help them or go look for help for them. And also, if you know a way to help prevent suicide, the youth to youth and the mental health are grateful for any ideas that you can come up with. Um, I want to say thank you and come up with that to Cassandra Hazel. She's not here. And the mental health staff, especially Audrey. He helped me a lot. He's the one that I work with a lot. And when we were visiting patients, even though I don't understand what is what what are they talking about, he always explained to me what they said for. And my instructor, Janet, Mary, and Elizabeth, and my classmates for being there. Uh, and thank you all for coming. Hello. 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 My name is Gabriela Ishfield, and I'm also part of Capstone. My topic is Child Neglect, Break the Cycle of Child Neglect. My research question started as, what are the effects of child neglect? And my hypothesis started actually Throughout my years here at CMI in English 102 and English 220 and also CM CMI 290, it was child neglect is a long-term problem that can affect a child both physically and emotionally. And due to my research throughout this period as I was attending this school, it actually proven my thesis through evidence and facts that it is true that child neglect is a problem that can affect a child both physically and emotionally. The types of child neglect, there are four types. It's physical neglect, emotional neglect, educational neglect, medical neglect. This proposal and my topic is important to me because I really have an interest with children and I work with them a lot and be with them. And every time I go to the road, how many have seen children out there by themselves and play, playing around at the roadside? How many in here? We know that we are all witnesses of this. And every time when I see them with no parents and no fathers and no mo mother, and they came just right across the road and were like, the kid, she's all alone, where's the parent? And I always think to myself and say, what's happening? And I realize that it could be child neglect. And I know you could look at it that way too. 
no matter how you spell it, but it hurts a child. Throughout this time, I was also able to do community service at, both, at two places, at with me and IA Child Rights Office. What they do is they go out there and they help children and their mother from when they're in their, the mother's womb until she's five years old. And I really want to give credit to with me for their, I believe when I went out to one of and observe what they do in the community, I was really impressed and I want to give credit to them, I believe, to what they're doing to the Marshall Islands. And also, with Kathy Jaman at Internal Affairs, Child Rights Office, also able to help the community in any way possible, like one of the student mentioned that we would do paperwork and full brochures and all that. I also had my voice be heard in B7AB in talking, mentioning child neglect. When I started Capstone, it was like, oh, this is the start of a new beginning. And then, to be honest, it does make me quite nervous. And then there are times I was almost going to give up but I will, my dad once told me, never say, I can't do it. Always say, I think I can do it. And there were times I was like, thank God for today. And then there were times I was like, I'm so tired. <laughs> but all in all, right now, I'm like, thanks to my three best instructors at Capstone, right? Thank you for helping me. I never thought I would be here, like never. Like I never even knew that there was a capstone. But when Janet introduced capstone, it really interested me, but it was also a big challenge. But I made it. I learned to be responsible, hard work, time management. <laughs> Teamwork and make cupcake toppings. <laughs> really delicious. Seriously. <laughs> so throughout this time, like I said, I would what I'm gonna give as my product is a brochure and also a music video. It, it was really tough trying to put this all together, especially the music video, but I am thankful what I want to want these two big products to do to whoever is reading it or listening to it, to let them understand that, understand about child neglect. Like I said, there are a lot of kind of solutions we, we could give out to children. But what they really need and what they really want and what they really long for is love. So help, let us share the love with these children. <laughs> Forever memories, the dedication, the teamwork, the hard work, the laughter, the frustration and also the accomplishment. And buy your bus, buy your boss a cupcake. <laughs> Capstone will forever be in my heart. Acknowledgement. I want to thank, first of all, God, and thank my parents for always pushing me to school. There were times I didn't want to come to school, but they would push me. And I want I also want to thank especially my instructors for being by my side along the way as I was doing all these things that I needed to do in Capstone. And for my product, for it to be done, I want to give credit to all those who helped me. I want to thank Manny for doing the keyboard for me. And I want to thank Chris and all 
CMC, CMI Media Club for helping me, taking shots with me. And also I want to thank the children, even if they're not here. But I was like, everyone come, we need to take a picture. Like, yay! And I also want to thank them. Thank my peers. Thank my mentors, Miram and Kali Adana. And thank everyone for coming here and listening to our presentations. Once again, help break the cycle of child neglect. Thank you. Tracy is a graduate from Marshall Island High School. She came to CMI in 2009. After a while, she found that she was pregnant. So she took a semester in a two-semester art school. Came back again and last year, she took the class, the writing literature class. And this semester, she continued to take this capstone course on retention. A mother, a worker at our bookstore, taking five courses, and also a P2P volunteer. I'm really glad that at least we have a student like Tracy who is a full head in her life. But she made that to school and hopefully she will march on May 22, I'm <laughs> My name is Tracy Jetson and I'm, one of, I'm very glad to be one of the participants today. And my topic is student retention. And I first started my study or this project last year during the um, writing research class or the 220 to 220 class. And I started this project on student retention. To my understanding, student retention is, for example, when a student drop out of school and come back to school to continue his or her education. And before I started my project last year until now, I thought that um, the dropout rate on value is increasing. And we will find the results later on. The aim of the research project is to uh, let people know that student dropping out is a problem in the RMI. And the second is, I want to let the public know or to see it and to have a concern about it. And to increase the community to get involved and try to reduce the problem. And as you can see on the data, um, during 2010 to 11, there was total enrollment of students of 1,036 students and 95 of them got dropped out. And if, if we look down, more down, I, I put it in color red because those grade got the highest rate of student being dropped out, which is the freshman years. And throughout my uh, project, I learned from a group, there was a group um, doing the same project from different organizations, which um, they're doing a project to, for the government on truancy, and I joined them last year. I also did surveys, because I, want I wanted to learn more about why students drop out. And I choose GED because um, they, they're the one with the most experience of being dropped out of school. And I started my surveys last semester. I did one survey and this semester I did two. And the, the questions on this surveys were um, if, if they're either female or male, and the last school they attended, and why did they drop out, and what made them come back to school. And these are the 
participant of this service. Um, 35 male and 21 female, all, of, all in all, 56, all of them. And I also found that, uh, find out that on this survey, most of the drug were from the And um, the common reasons why they, they drop all this um, attendants use a lot of well, the future plan, pregnancy, financial problem, or uh, when their school being closed down, or transferred to GSD, or for some student, um, they couldn't go on because they're too old for their age to be in a school. And the um, DI is common reason that SDI is number is attendance and use of alcohol. Um, I found that I found that, that what motivated students to come back to school were these for better future to receive a school diploma. Parents forced them to go back to school and um, they they want to compete with their other classmates. They they thought that um, seeing their classmates in school made them feel regret, so they came back to school. And um, I I didn't do service just do service and um, join the community by do community service, but I also collected data from the students that I know that they also do service. And we're very lucky that Lina Lucky is sitting right in front next to Johnson. Uh, these are our results. She, she, she also did service, but most of the students from GED. And I found out that they, um, her results are related to money, because we have the same common reason why students drop out, like attendance, pregnancy, alcohol, and future plan, and financial problem. And I know that I'm not the uh, only one in my not home, only on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am grateful that there is a student that did this and we got the same answer. And um, semi-capstone class or semi two name this class is very challenging. And these are the goals from my reflection. We're supposed to do also also journals. And some sometimes I would, I would say, now I don't know what to do with my brand. Because I haven't done any videos or projects before in my life. And um, sometimes I would say, gosh, Management. <laughs> this is one of the um, most hardest things I would do in my life is to manage my time. And every time I think about the planning presentation, I feel really nervous, like today. <laughs> <laughs> and as part of the classroom class, we have to do like community service. We would Success for to our instructor where we where we want to work and who will be on the tour. And I did 25 hours working in the community in SSA or a single state agency. And Julia Alfred was my mentor, and Julie up in the um, right corner. She was also one of the workers over there I was working with. And we're very grateful that Bali can please stand up. Can we please give him a pause? Because um, at the moment, my inventory is all well. And even though he has so much to do at home or anywhere else, but he can be here. So thank you for coming. And these are the things I did during my community service. I was grateful because I attended a conference, a 
uh, an awareness kind of brain. And I was able to talk during that kind of brain about my topic. So thanks to SSH. And for because of the, this class, I was able to also talk about my topic on the air. This very easy. Thanks to Adora. Adora, I love you. Thank you. Um, as I said, uh, this class is your main to make your capstone class. Um, it can be very challenging. Um, you need to be creative. If you need to do a video, you need your ideas to do it. And it was very hard for me because um, I have a lot to do. I have work. I have five classes. And I have um, other things to talk about. But I was able to come up with my products. <laughs> like, um, temperature in the video and thanks to um, CMA Media Club who, who really um, make time for me even though they don't want to listen because they're tired of me <laughs> but como <laughs> tara um, I also learned during the of uh, course, during this semester, I also learned that um, we have we have a lot, lot of responsibility to do. Even though I have other classes, but I will I was able to manage to do whatever I was doing in capstone class. And um, it is. A class that you have to manage your time. You have to apply, learn to apply to colleges. You have to bake cupcakes, to pay for TOEFL, or to pay for an application fee for colleges. And thanks to my peers and instructor for the good times to learn to make icing on the cupcakes. And um, it. It builds a lot of friendship between us because we have a lot more time to do to spend with each other. And uh, I learned a lot during this, this semester in capstone class. And I encourage everyone that this is one of the best class you, you should take. take. And, um, all in all, uh, student retention or my topic is dropout. I want to let people know that this is a problem with the army and we should start to think about it to come up with um, ways to reduce the problem. It takes a community or everyone to help each other to try to solve this problem. And <coughs> My, I thought this is what I thought that the rate dropout rate was increasing, but after after doing my project, I I found out that it is a problem that it is the rate of dropout is going up and down. So it um, we must help each other to solve this problem. It cannot be solved. It um it can cannot be solved if we don't. Um, hold on and stir each other. So, for me to let the end about my project, I have products of procuring a video, they're available on the table, and there's also a website thing that you can go on online and watch it for with the project. And special promotada to all those, those who are up on through my project, my mentor Julia Alfred. Um, one of the uh, interviews for my video is Carmen and two students from TV, which is um, Jamie and Robert. And 
I speak in my third instructor I want to thank you all for the good times and the challenging time. <laughs> and thank you all for coming to me. Thank you all for I hope we haven't forgotten anybody specifically, but many, many groups, uh, the groups who have um, uh, allowed our students to uh, participate in the community with them. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Media Club and Media Center. Um, thank you, other students who provided their research. Um, I. I'm going to forget people, and so I'm, I'm going to just, um, just everyone who participated, thank you so much. Roshani and Minor? Also, um, we will be writing 